Good morning, welcome to Inspired Church. It's good to be here this morning. Christmas is coming. And I just love the, the background we've got up here. You might not have noticed this, but just in between the words, little sheep. And every now and again, he just puts his little head down to eat some grass there. And while shepherds wash their flocks by night, or seated on the ground, the angel of the Lord came down in glory and shone around. We want to shed the glory of Christ around this Christmas. Let's begin that by moving around and greeting as many people as you can here this morning in Jesus' name. We'll rather build in. of your mess. We need to we need to celebrate Jesus and share with those that come only once a year and hope that they come more than once a year again and again. So we just share the food the food as a love of Christ and we think it's always about more than the food and drink is it has to go on. Amen. Also care cards. You find them in your newsletter we'd love to hear from you praise points, prayer points. What can we pray for you this season? What is on your heart? Share it with us that we can join with you and pray together and praise the Lord. Also, you can fill that in. If there's something you want to know, be new with us this morning. We'd love to hear from you. Anything you want to know, pop it on there. Send an encouraging note to somebody in the life of church. Send them, you know, if you forgot, send somebody a Christmas greeting. Use your care card. Pop it in your home buckets as they go around. Church news will be on the screen while you fill your care cards in. Oh, my goodness. What a week it's been. Most of the week I did not know what day it was. <laughs> Surely it must be school holidays today. No, still going to go to school, kids. Come on, let's go. They wound up last week. We have the answer. It's been a big week in our community, in our country. Christmas time puts pressure. People. Expectations. But we have the answer. I've been struck this morning as we sing these songs. And no one's special but for Jesus. And He is the answer. We went and sat in the city this week and watched the Nativity Sound. The Nativity Play. And I sat with some girls from work. One of them just doesn't get God at all. The other one misses God from the UK. They're very loud. What can you do? Should you get that? And I was struck again as we sat in the hundreds and hundreds of people. We're all the same. Don't miss the 
opportunity to get on the phone, to walk across the street or across the wall and ask someone to join you tonight or join you on Christmas Eve and come and sit and celebrate and worship our God, the King, the reason for the season. This has got to do with the offering talk, everything. God asks us for everything. He asks us for our tithe. He asks us to support the faith promise, the building of his place. He asks us to give our all. And sometimes it means asking an uncomfortable question that we might get a no to, but hey, we might get a yes to. Time to reach out. Because Jesus is the answer. And as people have reeled with the panel this week, they're asking questions. And Jesus is the answer. Let's stand together and celebrate that Jesus is all that we need. That he is our provider. That he is our rock.
and the yummies, that's right, Catherine, thank you for waving yummies. Someone texted me last night and said, who do I tell about the yummies? He said, just tell me. Bring the yummies, all right, so talking about that. The Kumo will be up there tonight, but Kumo won't be here on Christmas Eve because we've got our own coffee shop open, and you'll be able to put in uh, advance orders for coffee next Sunday, so uh, next month, sorry, on Wednesday on Christmas Eve, so uh, take advantage of that. And don't miss tonight, let's fill that house up there, let's fill it up. I've got a little uh, YouTube clip for you coming up right about now, Big June Boot Christmas, one we saw last week, you can't see it every, every time we meet until Christmas is done, all right? So you'll get some assistance. Here we go, on the screen, now. <coughs> Christmas is coming, and our theme is Christmas, loving and giving. And I think you know, there should come some surprise that that ought to be a theme for Christmas, the whole idea of uh, the modern Christmas in, in Western culture kind of seems to embody, seems to embody the ideas of loving and giving. After all, we give gifts to those we love, right? That's, that's what we do. And the shops are filled with people looking for gifts to give to those that they love at Christmas, right? Yeah, that's how it seems. Anyway, strangely enough, on the other end of the scale, it is also at Christmas that many people face personal and relational challenges. This is this. This article. Ah, Christmas. Silver bells. Mistletoe. Shopping and family togetherness. A recipe that can lead to joy. A recipe that can lead to quite a bit of stress. Did you know that Christmas time ranks just below finances at the top of the list of what people find stressful and worrisome? Yes, Christmas has a dark side as well as a bright side. Where are you on the continuum between joy and dread at Christmas? And the article goes on to, to speak about those who dread Christmas <coughs> Uh, because of family members they don't get on with, but they have to put up with at Christmas time. Some of you smile, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Some don't want to smile in case you get found out. <laughs> on the other end of the scale, because of being left out, not being invited when they don't want to be, but actually being left out of being invited to any meaningful gathering, or simply the stress of buying and organizing and other expectations that are placed upon us. <laughs> I know you all just love shopping. And so in these crowded times, you, that's, that's what you bring, that, that gives you your vibe. That, that, that just lights up your lights, whereas others have got the Grinch factor to get me out of the shops. I never want to go back into shops ever again. So Christmas time ranks right up there with one, one of the most stressful times of the year. So when we talk about Christmas, loving and giving, that's our theme, we possibly need to think about something different than the Western consumer culture and shopping frenzy and activity mania. Yeah, I think we do. So I want to say uh, that genuine love originates with God. And we talked about it last week and began to explore this, the heavenly consultation between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, first of all, let us make man in our image, in the light, in our own likeness. And then the heavenly, the heavenly consultation came up with a salvation plan even before the earth was created and created and humanity was created. But love originates in the heart of God. 1 John chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We love him because he first loved us. Uh, we love generally because he first loved us. We can only be in a position to truly love others when we have first tasted the love of God that he has for us. And his love for us in, is demonstrated in that he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Sacrifice, sacrifice. True love involves sacrifice. To love is to give, not indiscriminate giving, but giving for the betterment of another. Love always has an object outside of self. And I love to read 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 8 to, to describe this. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. 
If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So for love is to give, and love always has an object outside of self, and so the expression is, I love you. And love is from you to another. And so Jesus gives us a new commandment that encapsulates all the old commandments. He says, John 13, 34, 35, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So I want us to get our heads around this one another of which Jesus speaks uh, because they are not the people in our general community who are not believers. That, that's the first port of call. So I want you to journey with me on this. The one another's of which he speaks are his disciples. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And so it, it, it's, it's his disciples. Uh, it's, it's not the non-believers first port of call. It's, 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 it's the fellow believers. So we are called, first of all, to love our fellow believers, first of all, in our own fellowship. And, and I think about this, whenever I preach on anything like that, I see the looks of horror on some people's faces, if, but I don't like them all. If, if, well, 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 well if he didn't say you had to like them all. He said, love them all. And loving is kind of going to be overlooking the fact that you don't like them. You say, yeah, I don't like them, but I love them. And so I'm going to do some things that, uh, for people I don't like because I love them. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So because to love is to give, I was thinking about this whole matter of loving and giving, and I want to give you some practicalities on this. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, writes Paul, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. So, so what I want you to notice here is that as believers, we are to do good to all people. I want to go further and say we have to love all people. But I, I want to define the doing good as loving and giving. And, and I want you to notice that as we love and give to all people, there is a priority here which begins with the household of faith. That, that's, that's the first port of call. And the household of faith, while this is a reference to all believers, and there are a whole lot of them on planet Earth, I want you to know, is actually talking to one local church. He's talking to believers within that one local church. Uh, so your first priority to, to do good, to love and to give, uh, relates to those in the local church of which you are a part. Now, I, I, now just in case you're missing this, I'm going to make it so easy so you can't miss it here this morning. That would be the inspired church. That's the one I'm talking about here this morning. Not your pals in some other church. It's okay to have pals in some other church. That's not the ones he's talking about. He's talking about the ones in this church. The old saying rings true. Charity begins at home. And interesting about the word charity, I just read to you 1 Corinthians 13 in the old translations. It doesn't use the word love, it uses the word charity because charity includes both loving and giving. That's the whole point of it. Uh, and so, as we begin with the believers in our own local church in terms of loving and giving, I want to introduce you to the New Testament concept, the New Testament principle of the one another's. Uh, author Carl George uh, claims that there are 59 one another's, and you might just want to go to whatever translation you've got and check it out, and you might find one or two less or one or two more than that, depending on the translation. He says there are 59 one another's and fully one third of them call for believers to love one another. That's just one third. I just want to tell you what some of the other ones are. I won't cover them all, there will be a whole bunch of them because it's all about loving and giving. Here we go. Live at peace with one another. Oh, so don't keep on arguing. Uh, honor one another. That'd be cool, wouldn't it, to honor one another. Uh, live in harmony with one another. Greet one another. 
That's why we do that corny thing every time we meet. You know, sometimes we do it twice in the service, go around meet and greet, you know. Some people say, I don't like that meet and greet. And we, we looked at a, a, a little thing recently, uh, uh, things that people hate in church life. And uh, number one on that was the greet. Would you believe that? So people hate actually what, what the Bible tells you to do. That's what I'm saying. So there you go. Serve one another. Serve one another. Bear one another's burdens. Someone's down, they might need to lift up. Encourage one another. Actually, I think that's mentioned more than once, that one. So let's say again, encourage one another. How about this one? Forgive one another. And, 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 and there are more. And they're all in the New Testament. The, the peace and the honor and the forgiveness and the harmony call us to cut others a lot of slack in this local church and not be overbearing with them. Don't be overbearing to one another. The loving and giving of Christmas is first of all to be expressed to the people of the lo local faith community right here in this church. And Paul says there are bound to be disagreements in your local church. He said, I thought it was going to be perfect when I got here. Well, well, no, there are no perfect local churches. And as I've said before, if you do ever find one, I don't know, but if you did find one, please don't join it because you'd stuff it up too, you know. Uh, Paul says there will be disagreements, they're bound to be, and, and, but he said when you want to prove in the disagreement that you are right all of the time in these matters and get all cranky, bent out of shape and actually leave, he says you are violating the loving and giving principle. And, and he said, I don't want you to do it. This is this, 1 Corinthians 6, 7, 8 in the message. He said of, of these disagreements where you get all cranky and won't back down, he says these are an ugly blot on your community. Wouldn't it be far better to just take it, to let yourself be wrong and forget it? All you're doing is providing fuel for more wrong, more injustice, bringing more hurt to the people in your own spiritual family. So let it go. Loving and giving, now I'm talking about this take it on the chin, does not mean a lack of boundaries in your life with regard to allowing people to walk all over you, run all over you. Uh, but on the other hand, it does mean cutting people loose when they no longer want to hang with you or, or no longer receive your input. Let them go. I, I just love that old quote from Abraham Lincoln, uh, our American president of yesteryear. He says, if you are holding an elephant by the hind legs and he decides to run away, it's best to let him go. I, I hate it when people leave our church. That, that just that just wounds me so deeply. But I'm wise enough to let them go. If they want to go, it's because they don't like something here, so they're best off going. They're best off leaving. But I always leave the door open for them to come back. It's wide open. I have people sit in my office, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't get this. It's usually one of the spouses goes, my spouse wants to leave. I don't want to. What should I do, Pastor? Well, stay and leave the marriage before the heat, yeah? You, you need to work it out with the family and, and you know, they cry and they cry and they go, and I, I've got to be big enough to let them go. You probably won't like it when someone that you have had influence with or you've spoken into their life and they no longer want to hang with you and you can't get it, why they don't? And you probably never will. But please have the grace to let them go. That's a loving and a giving thing. Loving and giving means whether you like them or not, you will love them enough to allow them to get a fresh start. Let them go. Galatians 6.10. Let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. So especially the family of believers, that's a starting point, first point of call. But the loving and giving is to all people. And this year, uh, through our Kwanana campus and through the help here from the Baldavis campus, we've been involved in the uh, Kwanana Christmas toy appeal. And I got to tell you, we had so many toys, and some of you would see pictures I put on Facebook from that toy appeal. Our foyer up there's a big foyer, a bit foyer up there's like a quarter of the size of this building, this room here. And just chock block full of toys. And finally on Friday, uh, we had a team of people, some from this campus, some from there, who washed them on Monday, cleaned them all up. And, then we had a, the same team up there to distribute them on Friday. And it, uh, it was about 5 o'clock, I said to Lara, let's go up there and just make sure it's all locked away, tidied up with the people that had the keys and the codes and all that, and we're using, having keys and codes. And we went up there and the, and the 
crew were just finishing up, and there was probably about a little cardboard box about that square full of toys, and that was it. It's all done and dusted. And uh, so there was a bit of a mess there, so the rest of the gang were all leaving. They'd been there all day, so we'd think to go. And, uh, Lara and I decided we'd clean up a bit, and Lara was fussing around, as she does with cleaning up, and she can fuss, all right? You tell her. You tell her your husband said you fuss, and she does. And, and I got... I, I, what happened on, on Wednesday and Thursday, we had the place up there air-conditioned. And uh, so I, I put it all on, and I'm sitting, I'm sitting on a platform at our, on our campus just like this, while Lara's fussing. Well, she's working on it, I'm sitting, that's what's going on here. And, um, <laughs> And my phone rang, and I picked the phone up, and it was Tanya Watson, Executive Minister of Church of Christ, and I told, told her before about a revolving capital loan that we might get for that, and she goes, Gordon, I just to tell you, and I, was, I was pretty pleased, because when you bought the thing and you've got no money to pay for it, it's good when the money comes through, right? <laughs> but we, paid a, we paid a reasonable deposit on it, but 44000 to 45000 whatever the price was, and we could give them about eight or nine grand as a deposit, so we need the rest. And uh, Tanya said, our board has just met electronically, and we've agreed to give you the money. And right now, Gordon, I'm putting a, got my finger on the send button. The money's gone through to your account. Wow. Well, I got so excited, I, I got up off that platform, I began to dance around, and the fussy wife came back and said, what's going on here? I said, it's air conditioning. She said, I wonder why you had it on. <laughs> I got well, it's hot outside. Cold in here. And I said, tell you, we've got the money. The money's in the bank. I got so excited, I rang Catherine. She wasn't so excited because she had family over from, from, from Europe and she was trying to accommodate them, so I, I thought I'll bring all the board members to see if I get some more excitement. And three or four of those got excited, so it's all good. And, and I'm, I'm telling you this, because we are reaching out to a community there, not just with toys, not with just with food parcels, we've got a lot of those to give away as well, I think it's eight food parcels. But we want to reach out to the community that they want. We want to do good to all people, get rid of our building, not just hot oil building. And those of us who have been up there on a hot day as summer began, now it gets very hot in there, it gets very cool in there now. So if you're feeling the cool from the air conditioning in here this morning, get brace yourself tonight. It's Christmas and we're going to be worshipping that night and we ought to fill that place because we want to do good to all people, especially those of the household of faith. When it comes uh, to loving and giving, if our thinking stays focused on the temporal, without looking toward the eternal, no matter how much food and clothing we may give to people and we want to do that, we are shortchanging them if we don't give them the eternal. If we, if we don't think of their eternal situation and love them enough to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are shortchanging them. All we've done is given them food, which will get them over a little period of time and clothing, but we, we need to give them an eternal perspective, an eternal hope, loving and giving. And so this Christmas, you heard it from here in the offering talk, you heard it from here before in the care card talk, let's give as many people as possible this Christmas the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Luke chapter 2 verse 17, this is about the shepherds, while well, shepherds watch their flocks by night all seated on the ground. Uh, the angel of the Lord came down, glory shone around, and he told them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 2 17, suddenly uh, the angels, hundreds of angels singing glory to God and lit up that, that field where they're watching their, their sheep, the shepherds, that night, and suddenly there's darkness again, and the shepherds, when they get over the shock, go, when they'd seen Jesus, they went and saw Jesus, the baby, and when they had seen Jesus, Luke 2, 17, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. I want to say this to you about loving and giving. Spread the word, not just concerning what you have been told about Jesus, but what you have experienced relationally with Jesus firsthand. Spread the word. Spread your relationship. Spread that around. Mark 16, verse 15. And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, loving and giving. Now I want to land this message with some practical thoughts for you. Firstly, this Christmas, in order to be loving and giving, you may need to let someone go in order they no longer live in a relationship that is dependent upon you, but let them go that they might grow in their dependence upon Jesus. First, first act of loving and giving. Secondly, this Christmas, in order to be loving and giving, 
you may need to take someone into your life. Uh, that is, you may need to look beyond your own immediate circle. I isn't this true in church life? When we first come into church and we've come from somewhere or another else, we, we don't know anybody. And don't think it's very long, we get our little circle. And that's what we got, and I see it when we do greeting, whatever service we do it in. People always go personally to the people they hang with. And the new person comes like you and you once, and they're hanging out. They're hanging out to dry because they're... Look beyond your own immediate circle and friends and look for the person you don't know or don't know well and look out for the person as they become established in Jesus Christ and in his church. Look out. Thirdly, this Christmas, in order to be loving and giving, you may need to consider what you can give to someone to bless them. Material things, time, some time, just some time, some time. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's, it's not material things and time, maybe it's prayer. Maybe you need to commit to pray for certain individuals. The certain individuals need your prayer right now in the life of this church. You might commit to that. Some people need a word of encouragement. You, 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 what, what's all going okay for you and your job's going well and your, and your cash flow's going good and your family's going good? It's not the same for everyone in the life of this church. Maybe someone needs a word of encouragement from you. You're trying to figure it out. So it's done at the time to pop around and see them. Yeah, you know, it's so easy to do because uh, Mr. Text message will do the job for you. Mr. Phone call will do the job for you. Just give someone a call. Fourthly, this Christmas, give to as many people as you possibly can hope in Jesus Christ. If you do that this morning, loving and giving this Christmas, give an eternal perspective to somebody as you share the gospel of Jesus Christ. John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Almighty God stepped out of all of the limitlessness of eternity to take on all the limitations of time and space and humanity became one of us, lived among us, and I thought he died for us, died in our place, took our sins in, her, in his own body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live for righteousness by his stripes we have been healed. He's done that for us, loving and giving. And now he wants to share and work through us that others may receive his loving and his giving through us. Because of Jesus Christ, we can know an intimate relationship with our Creator God for all of time and for all of eternity. And this is the greatest Christmas gift ever. But to accept it, you need to unwrap it and take it in your hands and live by it. You need to surrender to all that you are and all that you have. You need to surrender that to Him. That's the way you unwrap the gift that He's given you. Would you do that today? In Jesus' name, Father in heaven. Wonderful Lord and God, you love us so much. You want us to be vessels of loving and giving. But we love you because you first loved us. from you in order that we might be those vessels through whom you flow your blessing to others. Lord, for anyone in the building today who has never surrendered their life to you in that distinctive and decisive way, make that the day for them today, Holy Spirit, visit them, draw that response and surrender from them. And for all of us, Father, help us to be those instruments of loving and giving. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let's stand, church. There was a song to sing. It's the surrender song. And I want you to use this song this morning as a prayer and surrender your life to our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. So I've done that long ago. I don't need to do that again, Gordon. Rededicate your life to Jesus this morning. Hey, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? If you're the one that's surrendering your life to Jesus this morning, come stand in the front. Would you do that? We call this the altar.
want to make a meal down here this morning in the presence of the faith community. Hey, hey if you're going to rededicate your life to, the, to God this morning through faith in Jesus Christ, come stand in front this morning. Would you do that? Right down here at the altar this morning. Make a meal this Christmas in Jesus' name. Thank you. 